Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go through why George Gascon is getting recalled today. Um, I don't know. The, the petition is just in the process of getting signed. So um, right now they're in the process of collecting sig signatures and you may or may not support his recall. Um, but the point of this video is just to tell you why. So I'm going to run down the list of things um, that he's done in the first few months that have caused people to be like, hey, bro, we don't want you here anymore. So let's just go down the list. I'm going to read off some policies. And Sonny here is going to go ahead and give some input, and I'll give some input as well. Um, but I'm going to start with uh, my top of the list, which uh, for me was like one of the things that I've, I figured out about him that kind of like frustrated me, which was um, the refusing to file misdemeanor charges against basically everyone. He uh, basically came in and had a non-prosecute list and said, for resisting arrest, prostitution, drug and alcohol crimes, DUI, driving without a license, uh, driving on a suspended license, trespassing, and other misdemeanor cases would all just be um, dismissed because they were not going to prosecute them. Now, we did a story, um, not me specifically, but we uh, ran a story about this on how, thankfully, this was b blocked by a judge in Los Angeles from basically barred Gascon for trying to ignore laws. And they, the judge said, you cannot ignore the law. Like, it's just, it doesn't work that way. So that's one of the reasons that I personally was like, hey, man, why are you, how does not prosecuting people for things that can harm people, hurt people, like a DUI, things like that. Like, I'm sure there's exceptions, like if you kill someone, mm. but. It's like, it's like uh, I don't know. My whole thing is, it's one thing to be like, oh, we're gonna change laws around to be more forgiving for people for like for like the licensing, for example, where it's like, oh, I just needed to get my license renewed and I don't haven't gone around to it yet and you're only off by a few days. It'd be one thing to make special laws for that, but he's just like, no, let's just rope that in with a bunch of other extremely dangerous things and be like, oh, I'm just not gonna prosecute. Yeah, because that encourages exactly. people if they're like, oh, you're not gonna get prosecuted for driving without a license, then people are like, why am I gonna go to the DMV, spend my money, go and through the test time. Exactly, they're just like, oh, I have no incentive to do it anymore because I'm not gonna get prosecuted, I could care less. So that's the, the issue with these things is it creates this environment where criminals are like, yeah, I can trespass. Yeah, I can be a prostitute. Yeah, I can resist arrest. Yeah, I can do drug-related crimes like DUI. Like, it's just things like that that are just for me. I was like, dude, that's you're allowing criminals to be criminals, which is just crazy to me. Um, another one for me was he was he was trying to make um, DDAs and DAs not be able to attend parole hearings, and they could not oppose the release of any offender up for parole. Um, no matter how violent the offense was. So basically, like, if someone, um, if you, I'm pretty sure everyone has a general idea of what a parole hearing is. You're in for a certain amount of time. Parole, you, get, you go in front of a panel, and they get to dictate whether you get to be let out early. And usually, you know, victims will show up and say, like, this is why I don't think so. You know, a DA or a DDA um, will show up and say, here's why we don't think he should be up for parole. And now he's trying to say, like, nah they can't attend and they can't oppose. So that's another thing, it's like, why? Who does that help? Like, if they're like genuinely like a terrible, they did a heinous crime, why is it up? Like, it's up to the panel to make the decision, and now you're giving. I think, I think if, it's the same thing with like the last thing. Um, oftentimes, people in like, uh, like attorneys and stuff like that who are prosecuting people mm -hmm. care more about their record and their job sometimes than like the actual person. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even in extreme cases, DAs like Kamala, mm -hmm. for example, she's done some pretty bad things when she was DA at one point. Like she was uh, at one point basically forced to exonerate, forced, forced to release DNA to exonerate someone yeah. from a crime. That's a bad thing to do as a DA. Yeah, but like to yeah, withheld, like, yeah, she withheld yeah. the information to exonerate someone from a right. crime that right. they didn't commit. So, it, so might it might be to combat that, but again, it's like you can just make laws around that and you can advocate for it. It's going to be harder, but that's yeah, the right I think way to do it. As if he, if he was doing certain things like this, I feel like there should be a law like, oh, 
for this, this specific, specific crime, crime. Exactly. Like, like shoplifting. Shoplift. And, and you're for this you're, yeah. Yeah, yeah for specific, specific instances, instances for specific crimes, being more nuanced about it as opposed to just being like, no, you DAs, you just can't do your job anymore. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. That's, that's another that's another it's reason. Counterproductive. It's, just, it's just really like counterproductive and it just again it's how like how does that help someone? Because again, if someone murdered someone and they have a parole hearing and a family member is like, nah, you took this person, you took my family member's life away. You deserve to be in jail for your entire sentence. And then now there's no no one to support the victim and be like, yeah, this is what he did. This is how heinous it was. This is how bad it's, this is how, you know what I mean? So that's number two. I'm going to put these all on a list for you guys. Uh, number three, uh, eliminating all sentence, enhan uh, sentence enhancements and I believe allegations as well. Um, and for those of you that don't know, an enhancement would be, you know, if you commit assault crime, or you assaulted someone, or someone assaulted someone, um, an enhancement would be, oh, if you're in a gang, if it was a hate crime, if you used a weapon, um, and I believe, you know, prior convictions too also play a role in um, enhancements, right? So he's also, George Gascon was also like, yeah, let's just get rid of enhanced sentence enhan enhancements. You know, like repeat violent offenders would be treated as first time offenders. So there's things about this where it's just like, how does that help anyone? If someone has prior convictions saying like, oh, they raped someone, they assaulted someone, they stabbed someone, and you're like, oh, let's not look at their past when it's like they've done this before, they should get a longer sentence because they clearly haven't learned. Mm -hmm. Like, how does eliminating that help anyone? Again, these are, these are very valid reasons of why the DA should get recalled. Like I... Yeah, it's not even like, oh, I don't like him as a person. It's like, no, you're just bad. Yeah, like, like he legitimately is instituting these, these um, policies that do absolutely nothing but encourage criminals to keep doing what they're doing. Oh, parole? Yeah, they're not gonna show up to you know, try and keep you in. Oh, do you have any prior convictions? Doesn't matter, they're not gonna be used. Oh, you committed a misdemeanor? Oh, we're not gonna prosecute those. Things like that, to me, are just like, why? Like, I don't understand this isn't even what he campaigned on. A lot of these things, like, he never discussed. And so that's another thing. People are like, hey, you didn't even talk about this in your campaign. And he only won because he had millions of dollars in, like, support. So it's like, dude, what is, what are you doing? Like, why? Why? It's just, it's literally, it's just, and, like, it feels like incompetence to me. Like, I'm not trying to rag on him and be like, oh, you're a bad person or anything like that. But it literally feels like he's just bad at his job. He's terrible. He's not even a year in and people are like, get out. You know, cash bail. Um, everybody's trying to work on an alternative for cash bail. And we, we voted on that in the last election of trying to find an alternative or um, working on cash bail to make it more fair. And I guess he's just trying to just get rid of it, just buy cash bail, which again, there's multiple instances of police departments, like Manhattan Beach Police Department has had, um, you know, misdemeanor crimes, um, where, you know, people are breaking into cars, stealing stuff, and they arrest them, and then they arrest them a few weeks later because they just get let out. So there's no like, oh, you're gonna stay behind bars because bail or, you know, stuff like that. So. That's another thing, cash bail. A lot of people are split choice on that. Like, oh, I, I like cash bail. I'm, I'm against cash bail. Um, that's really up to you as a person to decide yourself how you feel about that. Another thing is the death penalty. Um, he's trying to make sure that every murderer has a parole hearing in 20 to 30 years, um, which I don't know, man. I low-key feel like for me personally, in my opinion, that if you kill someone, you took away their life, you spend life in jail. What about self-defense? Okay, self-defense is completely different. Because most, if, if you did, if it wasn't actual self-defense, then you won't get prosecuted. What about a, uh, what, what do they call it, a crime of passion? Oh, like you raped my daughter and I'm gonna kill you? Type, type yeah. stuff? Or like you killed my wife, I'm gonna kill you or something like that. I don't know. I'm not. I don't feel like that's not my place to even say it. Like, cause I get where the person's coming from, but it's like you also did murder that dude. Like you also murdered that dude. So it's kind of like, an eye for an eye isn't necessarily the way. Um, he's also trying to be, you know, 
softer on you know juveniles so people that commit gang crimes rapes um, and whatnot he's trying to make it where they won't be tried as adults if the crime is heinous and rapes goddamn stuff like that and he's also been I've heard some things about him I like on this article I'm reading that um, he's really anti-victim where basically he's saying that the defendants you know the people who committed the crimes are highly valued as well like they're equally valuable in the eyes of the law even though they're the ones who committed the crime and by that I mean like the victim is saying like hey we want this person to go to jail the example I'm seeing here is a killer shy of his 18th month birthday shoots and kills two sisters then burns out burns down the family apartment house George Gascon demands the petition to try the 17 year old be withdrawn basically try him as an adult petition to try the 11 11 m older who wanted to try him as an adult because he was about to turn 18 and he uh he demanded a petition to have it withdrawn which is like yeah i'm not with that my guy probably should have been tried as an Why? adult i just don't get it i just heard like from this and a few other articles it's just like He's not really in support of the victims. He's more in like, oh, criminal justice reform. They're the criminals, so they need to be helped more, and we should give them lighter sentences, which is basically Okay, if he wants to do. to do criminal justice reform, then reform the prison system. I don't even see how this is criminal justice reform. All these things that he's, like, doing, it's like, that's not criminal justice reform. That's just, like, give these criminals a free pass. Criminal justice reform would be like, this law was unjust. Let's change it. Or, like... The prison system like doesn't rehabilitate people. Yeah, because they so don't. So let's care. fix it. <laughs> no, they don't. There's no way they. I feel like in it. certain situations of like where kids commit crimes, it's like yeah, you should help them go to school, help them figure out a different yeah. way. Yeah. But it's like nah, just throw them in a cage. For some crimes like rape, I get it. Like let that boy rot or let that girl rot, right? Right. And right. For like mass murderers, I get it. Let them rot in a cell for the rest of their life. There is no reform for that person. But, but you can try, but you probably that's a special type of psych, like psychology that's usually indicative of a psychopath. Yeah. yeah. So on, in all honesty, I just don't see why he's doing like why for what? This isn't even criminal justice reform. So I'm just going to end it right there for the George Gascon part. Comment down below what you think after hearing all this. Um, again, we're going to have all the links in the description. So if you want to research it yourself, um, we you can you can do that yourself and uh, check it out, but in my personal opinion, I think it should be recalled just by the multiple policies he's instituted and how they absolutely do not help anybody, like zero, it helps zero people. That's not even the criminal justice reform. So comment down below what you guys think, if you think you should be recalled, if you shouldn't be recalled, and why, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.